So when I started playing cello in my public middle school orchestra, my teacher did this exercise where she traced our hands on a piece of paper to see if we would have violin hands, viola hands, cello hands. And it was this point of like a little bit of stress, like, oh my gosh, I hope that I have cello hands so I can play the cello one day. My first love was actually dancing. I grew up doing ballet, jazz, tap, and all of that. I was really passionate about dance all the way through middle school and even the be very beginning of high school. My mom said that I started to ask to play the cello when I was nine. I don't remember any of this. She said, if you still want to play the cello by the time you're in middle school, then we'll figure out how to rent one and, you know, do all of that. Right out of high school, I went into college um, studying cello performance. And right after college, I quit. I quit music completely. I was certain that I would never play my cello again. And I put it in the closet. And I, I just wanted nothing to do with music. When you spend four years working your brains out at something and you're told over and over again that it's not enough, then you start to believe that. I quit thinking I am going to pursue other things with my life. I was ready for change. I was ready for anything but music, cello, or Atlanta. I found this bed and breakfast in the jungle of Puerto Rico, and I just went there for a couple of months. I mean, it was still an enjoyable experience, but yeah, it was like, the humidity is so bad there that they don't have, like there weren't like regular mattresses. They would just use big pieces of foam because mold would just like take over. So I slept on this like, <laughs> just this piece of foam <laughs> for two months. I don't know how I did it, honestly. I, I don't know how I did it. It's easy to like romanticize these things, but I was horribly lonely. What I learned from that is that nothing is as glamorous as it seems. Nothing. So I moved back to Atlanta and I eventually wound up in an office job with the cubicle, the 401k, the paper pushing. The first year, I was like, are you kidding me? I get like my own bedroom and I get to like have my own place again and I get like a consistent paycheck. But it definitely was suffocating towards the end. I was definitely unhappy. So 2015, <laughs> 2015 was probably the craziest year of my life. Um, I started creating music with a friend of mine in February of 2015. And it was the first time in years that I got excited about music again. It was like, it honestly felt like this whole world just like opened up for me. And I was reminded that music can be something that is fun and light and it ca I can make it be whatever I want it to be. I'm working the desk job. I just started creating music again for the first time in like in five years. And then two months later in April, I get a Facebook message from a member of the band Copeland. And he said, 
Hey, we are leaving in two weeks for this nationwide tour, opening up for Paramore in these beautiful seated theaters all over the country. <laughs> and they wanted me to come with them. And I was like, what in the world? <laughs> I tell them like, listen, I have this job, you know, even though I hate it, I have this job. Thursday night, I talk to my family, I call my closest friends, I stay up all night trying to decide if I'm gonna do this because if I'm gonna give a notice to my job, I have to give it Friday morning. And so Thursday night, I just, there was just this like inkling of like, what, what if I, say no and I regret this. So Friday morning I give my notice and I quit my job <laughs> and it was absolutely terrifying. I'm like saying goodbye to the most like stable job ever to go on a six-week tour with no plan after that, doing something I've never done before with people I've never met. <laughs> It sounds absolutely crazy, but I knew this was an opportunity of a lifetime and I had to trust that I would find the steps as I go along. I remember that first week we were opening for Paramore and I'm like, Haley Williams, what? I I don't know what I'm doing. I was just like, like on the outside, I was like cool and collected, but on the inside, I was just a mess. The Paramore crew, they were like, so you play music full time? I was stuffing envelopes last week in a cubicle, like you don't understand. <laughs> I remember coming home and panicking for the first time and thinking, what am I gonna do? Like, I need a job. My lease in Atlanta is ending like in a couple of weeks, like where am I gonna live? I got a call from Gunger like a day after that. Right as I had the doubt, it was like more evidence that I can do this. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna like play with Gunger right now gonna worry about my life later <laughs> um, and it just that year was honestly like riding a wave I feel like God just like picked me up and like pl like plucked me from an, an old life and just like dropped me in this crazy adventure that is in a lot of ways harder than the cubicle life but it's so much better. I mean, the, the riding the wave has not ended. It's just like, okay. <laughs> I, the more I can just like let go of like what should happen or like needing to figure it out, the more I can just like let that guiding force just carry me. I think if we wanna live a good story, if we want to have a good story, if our lives want to tell a good story, then there is going to be an element of risk. And that involves not having all the answers before you make a decision. This piece is called The True Path. And when I started writing this, I didn't have a clear inspiration for it. As we have done this interview and started talking about my story, I realized it fits perfectly with this track and the title, The True Path, because I have been talking about my true path and finding that. And I think the spirit of this song really reflects even the emotions that I feel in decision-making and thinking about 
saying yes first and the ups and downs and the highs and lows and it's all there. Are you willing to say yes first? Willing to say yes if you don't have it all figured out or is there something in your life that you're dying to try or you know would be good for you but you're too scared? Like what if you could just say yes first and then trust that the how will be revealed in time? Because if you can, then so much is waiting for you and it's gonna be awesome. My name is Chelsea McGow and I am a cellist and producer for Soundstrike.